What's happening everyone? Welcome to episode two of the Biomechanics of Running series. Today, I'm actually making an episode about barefoot running because someone sent me a message asking them to help with a biomechanics assessment they have for uni, looking at this sort of thing. So I said I'd make a video on the subject and try and help. So there was a pretty big craze about barefoot running for a while, which seems to have died down a little bit in recent years. Now that might just be because my personal focus has shifted towards more sprinting mechanics than the distance crazes. But let's get into it and talk about barefoot running. As I discussed in detail in episode one, looking at the importance of running form, running on a forefoot is greatly beneficial to running speed. It improves your cadence through reduced ground contact times and it increases your stride length through increased ground reaction force. Now, a traditional running shoe has a lot of cushioning around the heel, essentially inviting you to land on this part of the foot when you're running. There are a few issues with this which led to the barefoot running craze. First of all, the heel isn't designed to absorb impacts. You can quickly do a test at home to prove this. Just jump up and down on the spot barefoot and feel how much more uncomfortable it is to land on your heel compared to the ball of your foot. This contributes to a large percentage of the running related injuries that are taking place worldwide. Another issue, which again, I discussed in detail in episode one, is landing on the heel increases ground contact time so time spent in contact with the floor which significantly slows you down over a number of strides and your foot lands further ahead of your body causing a net braking force acting against the direction you're running now here's where the argument for barefoot running comes so without the affordance of a thick cushioned heel the idea is much like jumping and landing on your heels it becomes too uncomfortable to land on your heels and causes you to run more on a forefoot. This is seen in a vast majority of populations who are habitually barefoot and is clearly how we evolved as humans. Much like every other animal in the animal kingdom, shoes aren't a natural biological part of evolution and we are perfectly capable without them. However, this is where you need to take caution. A lot of the studies looking at barefoot running are correct in viewing reduced impact forces in barefoot runners due to the stride adopting a forefoot strike pattern. But in many cases, these are looking at habitually barefoot populations, i.e. people who have been predominantly barefoot for most of their lives. In the case of habitually shod groups, so people who are used to wearing shoes, those who are used to a heel strike don't always automatically switch to a forefoot strike straight away when barefoot. Some do, but not everyone. Now, this is actually more of an issue than if they were wearing shoes, since they're landing on a heel without the safety of a cushioned shoe. Therefore, these impact peaks that we see at heel striking aren't dissipated at all by the running shoe. The cushioned running shoe isn't going to dissipate as much force as the natural arch in your foot. So a four foot strap pattern is still preferred, but heel striking in trainers is definitely safer than heel striking without trainers. Another point to make is a lot of the habitually barefoot runners were running on a softer surface. It's all well and good to see fewer running related injuries in these populations, but if they were suddenly doing the same amount of running on harder surfaces like pavements, the number of injuries may increase because impacts will be higher. So therefore, it might be argued that having some cushioning in running shoes is actually safer in some cases. And it's definitely still possible to forefoot strike in trainers. One last thing I have to say on the matter is running speed, right? So. If a person tries running quicker, they tend to adopt a forefoot strike pattern. Now, since many of these studies couldn't control running speed, it cannot be specifically stated that the barefoot condition is the only factor changing between groups. So the forefoot strike runners may have just been running faster than the heel strike runners, for example. For those of you doing the assessment, your question, the question that you sent me was talking about the kinematics of running. So I'm not sure if they're asking you about the forces and stuff like that, because this would come under kinetics. So I would just stick to the basics of foot strike pattern possibly changing 
but not always. Also, if you're going to mention or reference what happens with injuries, it'll be worth thinking about whether the study was a retrospective or prospective study. Most times, the study's looking retrospectively rather than following an uninjured group for a long period of time to see if they happen to become injured later on. Both have their problems, which makes research so difficult, but as long as you're acknowledging whether the study's prospective or retrospective in your essay, I think that should be fine. Daniel Lieberman, Joseph Hamill, Alison Altman, they, these are all good researchers to look up. I definitely got a lot of my understanding from the work that they've published, so I'd look those three up and go from there. Right, when talking about minimal issues, these are a good bridge between being completely barefoot and completely shod. So, but minimalist shoes are basically a type of shoe that are way more flexible than a traditional running shoe. They have usually have a wider toe box so that your feet can like splay out a bit and they have little or no support or cushioning. So you can get extreme minimalist shoes like the five finger shoes, which are essentially like a glove to your foot. But this provides you with some sort of protection against sharp objects when you're running compared to running barefoot. Or you can get much more subtle versions, which basically look more like normal shoes. But all versions of minimalist shoes are, like being barefoot, going to remove that affordance to heel strike. But it doesn't mean they're going to make you land on the forefoot, right? That's key. That's the key thing. But yes, it is definitely possible to train yourself to switch your foot strike pattern. To learn what it feels like to land on the correct part of your foot, starting barefoot is definitely preferred. From And from there, you can like implement running in running shoes again once your body's felt what it's like to land more on a correct part of your foot. In my opinion, I think barefoot running is great and, and does facilitate changing your kinematics if done correctly. I'm in the camp of we evolved that way so it's probably for the best. However, we also evolved to hunt and be active all day, which just isn't possible in the modern world. We definitely didn't evolve to be sedentary for most of the day and then just exercise with a high intensity for two, one to two hours. So I'm not saying you have to run barefoot and I'm definitely not saying that running barefoot will automatically help. But I do think it will help you learn the new motor pattern associated with changing foot strike pattern better than you can if you're wearing shoes trying to do the same thing. You may have to actively think about how you're running at first just to get this new movement pattern down but eventually it should become second nature. Okay, that concludes episode two of the Biomechanics of Running series. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you learned something and found it interesting. I will see you in the next one.